So hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to solve the problem dominant pairs. So you are given an array of integers of size n, where n being even, you have to calculate the number of dominant pairs i comma j, where a pair is called dominant if uh, i lies from 0 to n by 2 and j lies from n by 2 to n. So the condition is array i should be greater than or equal to 5 into array of j. These relations are fulfilled, for example, uh, in array something like this, it form a dominant pair 0, 3. So 0 means indexing is used and n is even. So let's understand it. Okay. So first condition that they are given that n is even. Okay. Second condition that they have given that i lies from 0 to n by 2 means n by 2 minus 1 and uh, j lies from n by 2 to n. Okay. So obviously n by 2 to n minus 1. And the condition that we have to follow for this i and j that area should be greater than equal to 5 into array j. If this condition for any of the pair is followed, i comma j is considered as the, that pair is considered as the dominant pair. Okay, so let's understand better with an example. So we are given this array and the indexing, we are wrote like this 0, 1, 2, 3. And now where the i will be there? Only from here to here. Because we have to 0 to n by 2. That means n by 2 is 4 by 2. That means 4 by 2 is 2. We have to move only till uh, 4 by 2, that is 2 minus 1. So I will say, okay, I will lie in the half of the array and J will lie this half of the array. Just this is the question. Now we have to check uh, which of the pairs will follow this condition. I comment that area is greater than equal to 5 into array J. Now I can see that if I take 10, let's take 10. Now is 10, we, we will iterate for all elements. Okay. So I will check. Is 10 greater than is equal to 5 into 2? Yes. Okay. Is 10 greater than is equal to 5 into 1? Yes. Okay. Now let's come to 2. Now 2 will also iterate for this j. Is 2 greater than is equal to 5 into 2? No. Is 2 greater than is equal to 5 into 1? No. So how many dominant pairs are here? Only 2. So answer will be equal to 2. So how can we approach this question? So the brute force way that we will think that for every i, I will iterate to j. That means uh, this will be big of n by 2 for iteration. And for every iteration in the nested loop, it will be big of n by 2. That means uh, by remaining, by removing the constants, you can say big of n square approach. But I want only in big of n log n. So how can I do this? Okay. So before going to the approach, let's have some intuition that what we are going to do in that approach. Okay. So let me take a first intuition that 10, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now just see what I'm doing. Now you can see, is 10 is greater than is equal to 5 into 4? No. Okay. Now let's come to 3. Is 10 greater than is equal to 5 into 3? No. Okay. Is 10 greater than is equal to 5 into 2? Yes. Okay. Is 10 greater than is equal to 5 into 1? Yes. Okay. Is 10 greater than is equal to 5 into 0? Yes. Minus 1, yes, okay. So what I can observe from here? I can observe 4 was not able to uh, follow the condition. 3 was also not able to follow the condition. But any number less than or equal to 2 follows this condition. Why? Why? 5 into 4 is 20. Is 10 able to accommodate this 20? Obviously not. Okay. So is 10 greater than is equal to accommodate 15? No. Is 10 greater than is equal to... Uh, if 10 is able to accommodate 10, yes. So obviously, 5, uh, when I reducing that to 1, 0, minus 1, obviously it will become 5, 0, minus 5, minus 10, minus 15. Obviously, 10 will able to accommodate if 10. Then it will be able to accommodate 9, 8, 7, all the smaller number. Obviously. Okay. So that is the first intuition that. The intuition is like if 10 is able to accommodate 2, it can accommodate 1, minus 1, 0, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, anything, but less than or equal. Okay. Now, first intuition is done. Let's have second intuition. If you didn't get it still now, you will get when I dry run the approach. Okay. So, now second. Second. Second is, test case is 10, 3, 2, and here is 4. Okay. So, now, now you can observe one thing that I am sorting in decreasing order. So, you will get why I am sorting in decreasing order. Okay. So, so now, now you can see is 10 greater than is equal to 5 into 4? No. Okay. Now is 3 
greater than is equal to five into four? No. Okay. Is two greater than is equal to five into four? No. Is one greater than is equal to five into four? No. Is nine greater than is equal to five into four? No. Because it's twenty. So who can accommodate twenty? Only multiples which are greater than is equal to twenty. That means twenty, twenty one, twenty two. So if I'm getting twenty and here is twenty one, obviously it will be followed. Twenty two, hundred, all will be followed. But they should be greater than is equal to twenty. So if I have ten element which can't follow this four, obviously the smaller element three, two, minus one, zero, any one can't follow this four. You can observe this thing. Okay. So now, so we have two observation. First is like if if we have ten, four. Three, two, one. So if ten is not able to accommodate four, let's say not able to accommodate three, it can accommodate two. Then it can always accommodate one, zero, minus one, minus two, all. Okay. Second observation is if ten, if let's say I have other test case, let's say ten, three, two. Now come here. Now you can see if this ten is not able to accommodate four, obviously the three is not able to accommodate four. This two is also not able to accommodate four because what four requires. Four requires that that every element four into five. This will be the condition. So the element should be greater than is equal to twenty. But the element is ten. Obviously, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, nineteen. All will not be able to accommodate. But whenever twenty, twenty one, twenty two comes, it can accommodate. Okay. So that means whenever any element found which can't accommodate this four. So obviously, all the elements which are smaller than or equal to ten can't accommodate this. Okay. So. So when I try it, you will get more understanding. Okay. Now, now what we have to do? We have array. We have to divide into first half, and we have to divide into second half. Now, what we have to do? First thing, just follow the step with me. First thing you have to do: let's sort in decreasing order. Two, one, one. Okay. Now the new array is like this: ten, eight, two, two, one, one. Okay. So now let's remove this array. So that we can't get confused, and let's focus on this new array that I have half up sorted. Okay, I will tell you why I'm sorting half up. Okay, I will tell you. Now, now you can see. Let's put i pointer here. Let's put j pointer here. Let's make this like one minute like this. Now, is ten greater than or equal to? That means area is greater than is equal to area j. Five into area j. Is ten greater than is equal to five into two? Yes. Okay. That means that means for this ten, two will be also happy. One will also follow the condition. One will also follow the condition. Either zero minus one, all will follow the condition because I know I have sorted in decreasing order. Sorted in decreasing order. So if this element, if this element can follow, obviously five into one, five into zero, five into minus one can follow. Okay. So I will say okay. How many elements are there? Three. Let's make this count plus three. Okay. Now. Now, just don't do anything. Just don't do anything. Just shift the i pointer a. Just remove all of these things. Now, i pointer was here. I pointer was here. Now, let's shift this i pointer here. And j pointer is already here. Let's keep it as it is. Now, now area is greater than is equal to five into area j. Let's check. Is eight. Greater than is equal to five into two. No. Okay. So now you can see if this eight is not able to accommodate ten. Obviously, three, two, one, zero, minus one, seven, six, all of them will not able to accommodate this ten. This element is just a waste. Why? Because eight can't accommodate this two. Okay. Two can't accommodate this two. One can't accommodate this two. So I can say because what is the requirement at the left? Five into two always for this two five into two. So I will say I want the element which is greater than or equal to ten. But but I but when I am eight, how can I can I get ahead here till here greater than or equal to ten? Obviously, elements will be less than or equal to it. Okay. So what we will say? What we will say that j pointer is a waste. So we will say just increment the j pointer ahead. Okay. Just increment the j pointer. Now, now because j pointer will be of no use, means two will be of no use. So we will say okay that j pointer will be shifted ahead because it can't be used for other people. Okay. Now let's again check 
is 8 greater than is equal to 5 into 1. Area is greater than is equal to 5 into area j. Yes. Obviously, 0 minus 1. All will be able to accommodate this. Obviously, you know, if 8 can accommodate 5, it can accommodate 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, minus 1, minus all smaller than number equal to 5. Okay. It can it can also accommodate 6 and 7, but they are not present. So, how can it do so? I know if it can accommodate 5. So, I know for the future, it can accommodate 4, 3, 2, all. So, okay. I will say how many elements, how many elements are there in the array from J to N? I can say there are two elements. So, I will say, okay, make this plus 2, it will become 5. Now, now. Let's move the I point red because its work is done. Okay. Now let's move here. Now you will see is 2 greater than is equal to 5 into 1. No. No. So obviously it can't accommodate 1 minus 1 0. Okay. So I will say okay. Just move this J pointer because this one is based. It can it cannot be used in now future. Okay. Now. Now again is 2 greater than is equal to 5 into 1. Obviously it can't be used again. So let's shift this J pointer. Now. J is outside. Now you can see there is no one left for comparison. So to whom I compare? No one. So I will say answer will be equal to 5. So first thing, first thing, sort the half of array in decreasing order. Why not? Why not make the full array in decreasing order? Because otherwise it will mix the element. Let me tell you. Like let's say I have a array. So let's say 10, 5, 8, 2, 6, 4. Let's sort this array in decreasing order. This will become 10, 8, 6, 5, 4, 2. Now you can see. Now you can see. These three elements, these three elements. Are these three elements matching? No, 5 is extra because it came from. 5 is extra. 5 was here. But it shifted there. Means it uh, repositioned the element in a different manner. Which I don't want. I want if these elements n by 2 are here. Then they should remain here only. That's when sorting half a fair. Half a fair because condition is given something like that. We have to take only element till n by 2. Till n by 2. So I can't reposition the element. Second thing, we are sorting decreasing order. You know the advantage why we are sorting in decreasing order. Obviously, if 10 can't accommodate 4, if 10 can accommodate 2, it can accommodate 1, it can accommodate 0, it can accommodate minus 1. Now, second thing, I have also sorted in decreasing order. Why? Because if this 10 can't accommodate 4, obviously this 3 can, can't also accommodate 4. 2 can't also accommodate 4. That's the intuition behind this question. Okay. So let's code up this approach. Okay. Now, so now let's sort array dot begin. We have to sort half of array. So we'll say, okay, array dot begin plus n by 2. That means half array. Go till half array point. And sort in decreasing order. That means take greater int. Greater int is used as extra parameter in the sort function. So as to sort in decreasing order. Similarly, sort other half of array in decreasing order, array dot begin plus n by 2, comma array dot n, comma greater int, and done. Now, next thing what we have to do, we have to maintain two pointer i is equals to 0, j is equals to n by 2. Now, count is equals to 0. Now, while i is less than n by 2, okay, we will uh, move until i will reach n by 2 and j will reach n, okay. Now, now what we have to do? We have to check if area is greater than is equal to 5 into area j. If this condition is following. Okay. So count plus is equals to n minus j. That means number of elements. Why? Because obviously if I am at index 5. If I am index 5. And if I have n is equal to 7. So I have 5, 6. Indexing till 5, 6. Obviously n minus 1. So 7 minus 5 will be equal to 2. That's why I am doing count plus is equals to n minus j. Now. And at that moment i is done. Let's move i plus plus. Else j plus plus obviously because this element will be of no use. Okay. Okay. So now what we have to do? Just return the count variable and let's try to compare it in the code and check whether it's working fine. Yes. So let's submit the code. Okay. So this was all about code. So if you like the explanation, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you and have a nice day.